Welcome to the Midlife Leap, a lifestyle talk show for women in midlife. I'm your host, Sunita Johnson, and I am excited to share tips and interviews on topics ranging from business, career, current news, fashion, shopping, health, travel, and so much more. And because I'm known as the Midlife Leap Coach, from time to time, I'll share some of my signature Midlife Leap Coaching tips. So come on, ladies, let's reignite and and reimagine our midlife leap journey together. COVID-19 has wrecked much travesty on our families, our communities, and the world as a whole. If you paid for or need to pay for a loved one's funeral that's related to COVID-19, you can be a, receive a reimbursement up to $9,000 through the COVID-19 Funeral Assistance Program. To be eligible, the death certificate for those who died after May 2020 must indicate that the death was attributed to COVID-19. For deaths from January 20 to May 16 in the year 2020, Death certificates must include a signed statement from a medical examiner, coroner, or the certifying official listed on the certificate, indicating that COVID-19 was the cause, was the cause or a contributing cause of death. Now, the expenses covered under the program include funeral services, cremation, as well as the cost for caskets urns, burial plot headstones, transportation, and a few other items. Now for a list of all the expenses that are covered and for more information on the program as a whole, go to www.fema.gov. The program is not accepting online applications. You should call 1-844-684 Three, three. You will be prompted to submit the required information, such as the social security number of the deceased. And just in general, I want to offer my prayers to you and your family and my deepest condolences. I hope. Medical professionals are generally stereotyped as non-creative personalities, but Dr. Michaela Dartson is breaking down those barriers as a physician, filmmaker, writer, and cigar company owner. With over 28 years as a podiatry specialist in Dallas, Texas, she's certainly able to treat your feet and ankle conditions, but she's also bringing you great entertainment. Dr. Dartson's love for the arts led her to create a little Texas entertainment company, LLC, where she has published three books. She's launched Two Chicks Flicks LLC, creating and producing content for various projects, including a reality TV show of one of reality TV shows, one of which she is a subject titled The Boss Ladies Club Dallas, uh, and a cooking show, Make Me Like It as well as a variety of comedy shows such as Savage Comedy. On top of all of this, <laughs> she has podcasts. One is Purgatory with Dr. Michaela and the Pink Smoke podcast, which is associated with the cigar brand that she created with two Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority sisters. Michaela, you are busy girl. <laughs> <laughs> you and I go way back from when I first moved to Dallas, Texas from an ex-MI. <laughs> Michaela, tell me, okay, what emboldened you to take this huge step into entertainment and what tips would you offer other midlife women who would want to figure out how to juggle it all? Well, you know, um, I always had a passion for, for writing, starting in, I think, the fifth or sixth grade, we had a, 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 a school paper called The Crusader and I would write poems and short stories. And then I, um, I, I love writing so much. I was writing in a, I did a, a critical essay on the glass menagerie in college. And my English professor was just going bananas over it. He kept having me repeat certain lines of it. And I was like, wow, I have a little talent here. So I wanted to double major in English 
and biology, but I couldn't because the science labs were conflicting with the, uh, with the English courses. So I had to stick with medicine, but I just decided uh, in my res- during my residency, writing again, I, I put it down and it became an outlet for me. And I thought, this is cool. I need a break from medicine. So I'm just going to do it. So I started out writing and then I wrote probably maybe like at the time, maybe more than 10 feature films. And I figured if I want someone to take me seriously and look at my work, I had, uh, you know, placed in some competitions, but I figured if I want someone to really look at me, let me just make a short film. Let me just start doing it. Let me start networking. And um, I did that. So I, I guess for, to answer your question, I think sometimes we get, we get bored with a routine and everyone has a talent. Everyone has I think, more than one talent. So it's just about embracing it, not being afraid to, to just go for it. Cause at the time I had no film knowledge. I didn't know how to work a camera. I didn't know what I was doing. I just, I said, I want to learn screenwriting. So I just bought a book and I read and I learned and I just took those steps. And it, 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 to me, it's just about keeping myself happy and, and, and dulling the monotony. Yeah. Keeping yourself happy is definitely, <laughs> I think that's something with a lot of people, especially as we get into our midlife, we realize we want to, you know, tap into what makes us happier and more fulfilled. Not saying that the main career does it, but adding to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think because for me, it's like, uh, like I have a twin. And so we both started at pre-med and she went to switch to music. My parents were like, we're not paying for you to be a music major. So she minored in psychology, major in psychology and minored in music. So for me, I wanted a double major because I knew my parents not gonna pay me to be a, a, a English major. So again, it goes back to my happiness that that I'm, I'm circling back to what makes me happy. And, and I think it's, it's entertainment more than it is medicine. So we have to find a happy, every day I strive, I get up in the morning and I, I tell myself, you're going to be happy. I make myself happy. <laughs> okay. So how do you juggle all of it though? Cause you still have your practice and yet you have all these other projects. How do you manage to juggle it? Cause as we get older, we don't have as much energy as we used to. You know, I, and I have lots of energy. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, you've heard that everyone has the same amount of hours in a day. I'm very good at organizing my time. I, I use my time wisely. So I don't work all day. I, I uh, my practice is done in the afternoon, so I have the whole rest of the day to create. Sure. So I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I make room. I make. I make. You know, we make time for things that we want in love, right. in careers, and everything. So I make the time. I make the time. You know, I remember because last time we met met up I remember we I mean, met we met at your office and you told me you only work a certain certain days and certain hours and that reminds me of a friend of mine who's a dentist I think he gives himself Friday through Monday off like but he's paid his dues both of you guys have obviously paid your dues to be able to do that so I guess my question also is that you're in Dallas Texas I'm not saying they're isn't any entertainment there, but compared to other places, because a lot of people, they would use that as a reason to stop them. Like, well, I'm not in LA or New York, but yet you, you, you're moving forward anyway. Oh yeah. You, with all the streaming, you know, with YouTube, Instagram, and all these for, uh, formats, you, so many people are getting discovered on social media. So it doesn't matter where you are. Um, the work, it, it will all come to you. I, I've, I've networked so much with people in LA and, outside the country, just based on what I, of the content that I've shared on uh, social media. So it is possible. You don't have to be in LA to, uh, to make it in the industry. You don't. I mean, in Texas is a huge uh, film hub now, especially in Austin. I'm glad you said that because it reminds me of, of like an entertainment networking event when I lived in L.A. that I went to. And I remember quite a few like top uh, executives said that they are they're on YouTube looking for people, not them specifically, but they have people hired to look for talent on YouTube, on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what are what are you I mean, what tips I'm sure women come to you and ask you for tips and advice. What are your maybe number main main two or three tips that you give people? Organization is one, I guess. Don't listen to anyone has to say if you have a passion in your heart. It's it's put there for a reason. We are, you know, I I want to be, you know, being, you know, the road to be a doctor wasn't easy. I did it. 
because it was in my heart. There are so many people that will try to, to, to spit on your dreams and, and make you maybe think that you can't do it or it, it doesn't make sense. It, what you do does not have to make sense to anyone except for you. If you, if you, if you stick with it and do it, people will, doors will open. There will, people, there will be people that will come into your life that will help you. You just, just don't stop. Just have tunnel vision. Don't listen to people. There are gonna be so many haters Along the way, you'd be surprised. The same people that are dogging you would be the same people who are trying to steal your ideas. Mm. So don't fall for it. Mm. Any other tips, advice? Um, you just said organize. I, if you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna do, make sure that you brand yourself. Get a get a website. Get a uh, an email address. Get a get the LLC if you can afford it. Just do something to make yourself a, a business, a little thing that to get an email address. It doesn't cost much. Have social media, get social media, uh, brand, start branding yourself. Social media is free. Those are little things you can do for free to start branding yourself and putting yourself out there as a company, as you, as your brand. Mm -hmm. Basically do something, take some kind of action, do your research, yeah. whatever. Okay. But you know, it's, you mentioned that to not listen to other people who are, who are, I guess, naysayers. And I, I sort of had this conversation with someone recently regarding my talk show because I was doing something years ago back in LA before I had to move for my dad. And one of, a friend of mine had Oprah's producer look at it and I walked away from those opportunities basically. And for years now I've been, since I've been here in DC, I was like, how do I do, you know, what I was trying to do, but maybe a little bit differently because this is a totally different environment. And I have gotten a lot of, well, keep your day job, whatever, whatever. I've downsized to part-time work and I get the concerns people can have because retirement is right around the corner. But if you're handling your finances and you really believe what you're doing, you know you can monetize it. I think in being also being uh, fiscally responsible, not uh, I'm not going to overextend or go beyond a certain, certain point if I'm not being able to save for my retirement or whatever. Uh, what what would be what point was I going to make there? <laughs> so I'm just saying I get what you're saying regarding yeah, the spending on your dreams. And I was like, we, we and we shouldn't be tethered to to the to, to I uh, common ideas like you have to retire at this age, you have to do that. Who says you have to start working at 60, 65, 70, 75, 80? Most people don't hit their strides in their 40s. Um uh Ford, he didn't hit his stride until his 40s and 50s. He did, he was not, there's so many and there's so many people who have made major contributions to this world, Carnegie, all those people that didn't do so until after their 40s and 50s. So we have to stop putting limits on ourselves and stop, you know, live for the moment, live for the day. Don't look down a road and say, oh, I have to do this by this age and that age. You just mess yourself up. Yeah. You're going to, you know, cloud yourself from the beauty of your journey. Mm -hmm. there, and then what people don't realize is there's enough for everyone. There's enough. You can't have enough uh, talk show hosts. You can't have enough podcasters. There's something for everyone. Everyone has something that everyone needs. But the naysayers, the people, you find the people that really don't have a lot going on in their lives or who really want to be you are going to be the main people who are going to tell you that you can't do it, that you shouldn't do it. They're going to knock. They don't have, they don't, they don't understand your vision. And they're supposed to because it's yours. It's not theirs. Yeah, I realize yeah. everybody has different lifestyles also yeah. because LA, I'm used to LA and New York where people are, are they could be selling their sofa today. And then all of a sudden they're set up for, for generations <laughs> just from an idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so, and then another thing uh, I think you sort of touched on, it's like, I think about like we always hear about people d go to their grave with their dreams. You know, a lot of dreams are left un un unfolded or un what undiscovered or whatever unrealized. But also, I think a lot of us we don't think about. Okay, so you don't pursue your dream, and then you get to your 70, 75, 80, and you're kind of regretting a lot of your decisions and your life. Yeah, because Sunita, some people, they're always waiting for the perfect opportunity. You're waiting for, if I can get this job, if I can have this much money, if I, could, if, if I can get with this person, if I can do that, then I'll do this. Don't wait. There, there will never be a perfect time to do anything. I just, I just, one day I just started, picked up and I just started writing and that was it. 
Yeah. There will never be a perfect opportunity. The perfect time to do it is right now. Just, just do it. And Worry there's tons of resources. Yeah. yeah. And there's tons of resources. You picked right. up a book. <laughs> and oh, yeah. you don't even have to buy a book necessarily. Go to the library. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you to, uh, stage 32. Uh, it's a networking for, it's a, a, a free platform for creatives. Mm-hmm. And I was able to uh, do my first short film free by networking with people that live that were on stage 32 that lived in Dallas and we just pulled resources and we did it that way 30 the number 32 stage 32 it's really great but they also allow they also have pitching contests that cost but they you can pitch to major networks with them but it's really a, a really good networking platform stage 32. Wow so it's and not local to it's not local to Dallas it's national yeah stage 32 it's a okay. you can join set up a profile and just start networking away they have great resources for free Okay, so before I let you go, tell us more about your projects. Of course, I have I'll have your website and everything up, but tell us more about your projects so people can find you. Okay, well, well we have a lot going on. Um, <laughs> under the two tick splits umbrella, uh, I do have a, a cookie show called Make Me Like It, where people invite me in and they make me like something. I was able to shoot something we haven't put it out with Sl- 